Hello my lovelies, my name is Angela and I am the owner and creative energy behind Elfen Helden and today I would like to walk you through how I actually created this uh, cute little keyboard chanois, so stay tuned. Welcome, welcome, my friends, to my YouTube channel. Again, my name is Angela from Elton Helden. I'm so happy you found me. Guys, while you're here and you haven't done it yet, so please follow my channel, hit the bell so you don't miss any upcoming tutorials and inspirations from me. That'll be absolutely fantastic. So today we, I'm going to walk you through how I created this keyboard using some Mutiband Post Chalk products and Dixieville paints. So if you have any questions guys, leave them in the comments or contact me directly. Uh, I'd be happy to help you out and um, the list of products actually you don't need to rush to write them down. I've got them listed in the description of this video also. So I would say just let right dive into this project guys. So this project was as per usual prepared with cleaning with white lightning from Dixiebel. It's a cleaning residue to make sure that there is no grease or dirt or anything else left on the project. So as I'm going to work with decoupage today, I am laying down a base of white paint because decoupage papers are usually translucent and depending on the color underneath, the colors are going to be bright and vibrant or they're going to be a little bit more muted. So as I want to have them, vibrant. I prefer a white base underneath. So I'm applying from Dixie Bell and the Chalk Mineral Paints cotton as a base and I am using from Posh Chalk the small blending brush with, um, which has got uh, synthetic bristles. It is a difficult one for a German person. My, my apologies, but I think I did pretty well. It's got synthetic bristles and um, it's perfect for blending and uh, applying top coats, base coats, whatever. It's a lovely brush. I just love it. So the decoupage paper I'm actually using today is from the Poshock Deluxe Decoupage Papers called the Chat Noir and the size is A3. They are rice papers, meaning they have a fiber structure. At the same time, they are pretty thin and very strong. So they're very easy to work with. So even if you if you're not um, if you haven't worked with decoupage papers before, there's no reason not to try it with those. So when I like to blend in edges of the paper into the project, I like to rip the edges off because a ripped off edge has got like a fibery structure and that is easier to mold into your project than if you have like a, a straight cut line. So therefore I am, well, I am actually using my fingers to do that. I've been wetting my fingers just with some plain water and applied it on the edge and uh, to rip it just a little easier. Obviously the more professional version would have been to use uh, a brush um, to do that, but uh, you know me guys. So when the paint basically has dried, I'm going to apply the decoupage paper. As a decoupage medium, I'm going to use the Posh Chalk infuser um, which is originally for diluting the post shock pigments in them but this is a very versatile product and i love versatile products which you can use for multiple um, surfaces so the post shock infuser you can use for diluting the post shock pigments you can use it for applying decoupage papers and also at the same time sealing your projects so that's what i'm using at the moment the Poshock infuser has got like a 
gel, jelly. <laughs> yeah, I know that's a word I'm making up again. Um, consistency and it's a little milky if you look at it, but uh, it's going to dry translucent uh, or basically not translucent, it's going to dry clear. And uh, it's pretty easy to use. So I'm applying it onto the board first and then I'm putting the decoupage paper on top of it and I'm going to put uh, some more of the infuser on top to make sure it really adheres and sometimes when you have a very porous surface which sucks in the infuser like this is um, this is some plywood and the chalk mineral paint both are very dry at the moment so they're really sucking in the infuser so I'm adding some more on it but you can see the paper is really strong I can you know pull it back and you know replace it without any rips as you can see I've place the paper basically in one go. This is a pretty small project so it's easy to do with that. If I would work with bigger papers I would work in sections but with smaller papers I do it just all at once. I am smoothing it out from the middle to the outside to make sure that the bubbles are squeezed out to the outside and I'm using also the post chalk blending brush um, to smooth the paper out. So now we're going to let uh, the decoupage settle down and dry and in the meantime we are going to prepare the um, frame we want to put around the decoupage paper. And yes guys, I have been measuring so <laughs> stay tuned to check out if this worked really out. I'm using the trim number 46 and I'm also using a bit of the trim 719 to apply onto that little um, wooden piece which is going to suit like um, like a shelving, like a little shelf basically. Um, woody bands are available in hundreds of ornaments and trims in many sizes and shapes and they are ever so versatile. The special thing about them is that um, they have all the properties of real wood when they are cold. You can basically grind them, you can drill them, you can saw them, um, you can carve them if you want to, you can break them if you have a fragile piece obviously, but you can also rejoin them so don't worry. Um, but when they are heated up, um, they with a hairdryer, well you can use a hairdryer, you can use a heat gun or a hot plate or something like that, an embossing gun, whatever you just have on hand to heat those up. Um, they become flexible and pliable so this is absolutely amazing because then you can attach them basically to almost any shape you can think of you know around curves and bottles and uh, corners and everything you just can think about also you can use any thought of paint on them you can paint them before you apply them you can paint them after they, they've been applied you know basically depending on the look you're going for um, with your project i actually you know because i already have the decoupage applied and i don't want to have any paint on the decoupage i'm painting them before because they're going to have a different color than the, de the decoupage basically so i'm using the chalk mineral paints from dixie bell caviar which is a deep black and i am basically reheating the trim to make sure it it you know stays nice and bendable and it's not breaking but as i said before you know everything what breaks you can basically reattach together so you know i'm pretty relaxed with that and after i finished with painting i'm going to roll that up back into a coil which just makes it easier to to manage and applying the woody bands to your project, you use uh, wood glue of a good quality and it doesn't matter which surface, surface it is, if you apply it onto glass, on wood, or on metal, on plastic, whatever, you always use a good quality wood glue. Um, here I'm using this piece of wood which I'm, which I'm going to make like a little shelf on the, on the um, keyboard and I'm using the trim 719 which basically overlaps it a little bit to make like a little step so everything which is going to be placed onto that little tiny shelf will not slip down. I'm actually working with the wood glue from Tightbund which is called Quick and Thick uh, which is basically also perfect if you work on um, 
vertical surfaces um, to apply the woody bands and um, they hold up pretty strong straight away without slipping down, which sometimes can be a pain in the neck. My favorite glue I'm working with is from Tight Bond, the Quick and Thick, because it also works really nicely when you work on a vertical surface to uh, apply the woody bands. They hold up pretty strong straight away and they don't slip down. So I'm applying my wood glue onto the project and then I'm warming up that little trim I've cut to size, which just is going about to fit around this um, little wood piece. And I'm just going to push it on there, warm it up again so it's nice and bendy and goes tight around that corner. And at the end, I'm basically cutting the edges or the overlapping edges with a sharp knife off. Now let's work on the frame. For the frame, I'm cutting the trim into size basically to make my life a little easier. I'm applying the wood glue on the back of the trim. I'm placing it onto the board where I want to have it pushing it nicely down into place. And uh, I'm doing that with the uh, second um, side also and making sure I'm overlapping both trims on the edges. So um, I wanna have a 45 de degree angle and this is for me the easiest way to achieve that without having to think in which direction I have to cut it. I am overlapping them. I'm reheating them to make sure they're nice and bendable. Then I am taking a sharp knife and I'm cutting through both trims in a 45 degree angle in this edge. And then I can basically take off the, you know, the leftover bits from the top trim and from the bottom trim. And I squeeze those back together and I have a nice well, 45 degree angled edge, you know, like a, like a proper frame. And this step I'm going to repeat with all four edges, just um, the easiest way for me to do it. Every um, bit of wood glue, which is basically squeezed out on the sides, which I apply too much on the, the molds, I'm taking off with, with a damp cloth, um, or you can use a baby wipe, a damp cloth, a wet brush or something like that. And you don't need to worry, you won't harm your ornaments, you know, you won't um, harm your ornaments also with pushing them down or something like that. They're really, really strong. So now we have our frame finished and we can slowly see where the journey is going. Um, I actually painted the bottom piece, which, which is white at the moment, also with the caviar by Dixieville Chalk Mineral Paints. And um, then I have sealed it with the post shock infuser. And later on, you're going to see why that's always a good idea to seal your paint before you add any more details to it. So now we're going to start with the stenciling part and um, well, I decided to put a stencil down there just to, you know, finish it a little off that, uh, that project. Obviously it would have been easier um, to apply the stencil before I applied the frame, but uh, you know me, I don't like to make my life easier and I've, you know, decided it later. Um, I'm going to change my mind again anyway, so... <laughs> Um, that's that's just me. So the, the stencil I'm using is the lace border from Posh Chalk and I've just cut that piece off, the border piece off I want to use. You see me here using the Posh Chalk metallic paste in light gold and in red alizarine. Um, at the end, basically, when you see the final project, you will notice that the stencil is looking different from the color. I didn't like it at the end, um, so I've taken it back off. And uh, this is basically, I was able to do that because I've sealed it before with the post shock infuser. So the paint didn't uh, grab onto the metallic paste I placed on there. And the metallic paste hasn't dried completely yet, so I was able to remove it with, with a damp cloth. It looked pretty nice, but um, I wasn't happy with it. That's just me. So whenever you're stenciling, it's always quite handy to keep a bucket or something with water next to you to place your stencil right into it. 
after you used it just to make sure that the product doesn't dry onto the stencil and it's just easier to to clean off now we are going to work with uh, one of my favorite products which are the post shock pigments um, i'm using the pigments in pale gold for this project because that color basically matches perfectly you know the whole color scheme of that um, decoupage paper and goes well with the black and the reds in there so i'm applying some of the um, pigments into a little jar the pigments are basically metallic powder pigments and now i'm going to use again my post shock infuser which we use for the decoupage which we use for a ceiling and now it's basically being used for its original purpose for diluting the pigments. I'm applying just a little bit of it. A little goes a long way so always just use a little. I'm mixing up far too much again uh, because I just want to you know um, basically enhance a little bit the highlights of that project and you know you just really need a little. Mix them up nicely with a stick or a brush or something like that, whatever you have on hand. And you can see that, you know, it's almost like liquid metal, ever so pretty. You can also mix those powders with each other. If you mix, for example, the copper with the silver, you get like a rose gold or something like that. You can basically mix any color you wish. So, um, applying it onto the highlights of that board, I'm using an artist brush. I'm putting just a tiny little bit on that brush. I'm holding the brush in a flat angle to the project and pulling it very gently, basically across the details of that, uh, that trim to make sure that uh, the pigments basically release on the surface of the of the details and um, enhancing the highlights of it. I'm going to do that all the way around. And you can also repeat that step if you wanna have um, the color a little more intense. The greatest benefit of mixing the pigments uh, on your own is basically that you can control the consistency and the strength of the pigments by yourself, you know, depending on the look you would like to achieve. Doing the same thing now also on that little shelf we wanna apply um, on the trim, basically same thing, nothing different, applying the pigments on there, making sure to enhance the highlights of the details. So now I just need to glue that little shelf on. I also attached it with a nail gun from the back to make sure it really holds up, which really wouldn't have been necessary because that wouldn't need to hold any kilos or something like that. I've screwed on the hooks of the, you know, for the, to, to hold the keys. And I've used the Posh Chalk Patina in black just to enhance and to age a little bit the edges, just a tiny little bit, not too much because I don't want to have it too overwhelming, you know, just to add a little more interest. And that's basically it, guys. Thank you for watching till the end, my friends. Um, I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. And uh, just let me know in the comments if you would like to do that yourself. And if you did, um, please send me your pictures. I'm always interested in, in the projects you do also. If you want to buy the products, you can get them in my web shop online or you can, you know, come by and visit me in my shop. I'm always happy to meet you in person also. And um, if you haven't done it yet, guys, I would be very grateful if you just follow my channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming projects. And I'm saying now, goodbye for now. Ta-da! Take care, guys. I'm seeing a 